Hey what's up guys, I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Crusader Kings 3 as we are playing as the Doki Enos Dynasty in the Byzantine Empire. So before we get started, I did like to mention one thing. We're going to be having a little bit of a change of schedule for this week, unfortunately. Uh, and, and I mentioned this a bit in the Hoi 4 uh, video, so some of this is going to repeat a little bit, uh, you know, if, you've, if you are watching that series as well. Uh, but Friday, November 20th is my birthday. I don't typically celebrate my birthday, I really even care about it. Uh, personally, uh, I'm actually working on Friday. I'm working Friday night because, again, I don't. I mean, I kind of feel like birthdays are kind of a kid's thing. Uh, so, you know, I didn't, I don't take it off. I don't, I don't ask for it off. Uh, but it is important for my family. Uh, they kind of make a bit bigger deal about it than they probably would as well because of the fact that I don't, uh, I never really had a uh, birthdays in my childhood because I had pretty cruddy parents, uh, drug addict parents who, you know, didn't care about such things. Uh, or me for that matter. Uh, so I ended up going into the system, group homes, foster homes, all that kind of stuff, and we didn't do birthdays there either. So my wife kind of makes a big deal about it uh, because because of that. Uh, like she, uh, you know, gave me my first cake, uh, gave me my first birthday present ever, and uh, you know my kids, you know, they give me presents, they make me stuff, and, and therefore on Friday, you know, with me working, we're gonna have to change the schedule up because I was planning on recording all these videos in advance so it wouldn't affect the schedule at all, but then we had something come up on Wednesday, we had some car troubles, and I didn't record the, the Hoi 4 video for Thursday, and therefore I had to record that today. I literally just recorded it right before this episode here, and so it just messed the whole schedule up. And so because of that, uh, you know, because I can only record one CK3 today, uh, what we're gonna do, uh, so this of course will be for Friday, this will be Friday's episode, and, and since I'm not recording any videos on Friday, uh, what I'm gonna do is on Saturday, I will record an extra long CK3 episode on Saturday, and then that'll come out as soon as I can get it out. I'll edit it and I'll upload it, and, and as soon as it's ready, it'll come out, so that'll either be Saturday night or early Sunday morning, like very early, you know, one, two in the morning or something like that. And that'll be like the combined episodes in a sense. Uh, it won't be quite as long as a combined episode. I'm looking at like maybe an hour and a half, perhaps, an hour and a half episode, maybe hour 20 minutes. I don't know. I'll make it as long as I can, guys. And I can't say exactly how long it will be after editing stuff. But the point is, it'll be an extra long episode, and it's kind of going to be like the combined Saturday and Sunday's episodes. And it'll also be kind of like in the middle of when those videos would typically come out. I'm trying for Saturday night. If not then, then, then early Sunday morning. So that's what we're going to do uh, for the weekend, guys. Sorry that it's, uh, you know, obviously it's, it's not my fault uh, that we had car troubles and and uh, of course the whole birthday thing. So I am turning 34 years old for any of you guys who are curious. So I'm officially middle, mid thirties. Some would say middle age. I consider 35 middle age. Some people say 40 is. I don't think that's right considering the fact that men in America live to what? Average age is 72, 73. Uh, so therefore like 36 is actually technically middle age. I know I won't live that long, so I say 35 is. So I'm almost middle age, and all I'm thinking is at least I'm not 40. <laughs> that's that's what I'll be saying until for the next uh, six birthdays, until that sixth one where I finally do turn 40. Uh, so let's go to get started in today's episode. I asked you guys in the last one uh, what you guys felt about the uh, the content trait and how we should you know play with that trait, uh, considering the fact that we also have arrogant and fickle here. Uh, to kind of make up for some of our, our different decision choices that might not fit with content. Or if we should just play with the content trait and just not do anything. Uh, just, uh, you know, spend 40 years going through events and, and building up the two counties that we do have under our possession. And it does seem almost everybody in the comments agreed that we should not just sit here and not do anything and not expand uh, for that long. That's a huge chunk of, I mean, I don't know how many videos that would take when we're just playing on speed five and doing events, but I mean, it's a lot of videos. I mean, that's 40 something years, maybe that's a good chunk of the campaign. So uh, a lot of people seem to agree that, you know, the other traits we have would explain us doing some things, but that because we're content, it means we shouldn't play as we normally would. So while everybody did agree that we should, uh, you know, still conquer, uh, but also we should respect the content trait, there was some disagreement exactly how we should do that. So some people said we should leave these two counties under our brothers, just let them keep that and not mess with them, but then still get claims and conquer territory, while others said the exact opposite, that we shouldn't conquer any territory, shouldn't do any claims, 
but should at the very least try and seek our own uh, our lands back, our father's lands back, feeling like that's rightfully ours or whatever, like we should have gotten it or, or uh, you know, with the arrogance that we deserve it more than our brothers. Uh, so they said we should just take these two back and then just sit on these four counties here and then not expand any further. So uh, there doesn't seem to be any agreement exactly how we should do it, but there does seem to be agreement over the fact that, you know, we should do something. Uh, so, uh, so that's what we're going to do, guys. Uh, I think what we'll do is maybe take... Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll split the difference. Maybe take one county of our brothers, but leave the other one in or something like that. Uh, that's a possibility. So we could, like, we could assassinate him. Uh, attempt to assassinate I think that would be the best way to do it. Like, attempt to, to assassinate him. Do a scheme for this. A very, very low chance of, of succeeding because we're at war with his liege. Uh, so, but we could do that once we finish this war, which we're almost done with. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and do that now. Uh, money's obviously a problem here. We're not earning very much. Luckily, we got these ransom come coming in here. Uh, but yeah, not earning very much money because of this huge army that we have, which cannot be sort supported by our troop. Uh, excuse me, cannot be supported by our economy now that we've lost these counties. So we'll do this battle real quick. And the main point of this is just trying to get that war score up a little bit higher. Looks like it is actually ticking up a little bit because apparently we do control the war target. So we are getting a ticking war score right now. Uh, but yeah, this should tick it up a few percent, maybe five or six percent or something like that. Not even that. Looks like three percent. Uh, two percent. Okay, tick and worse score. Also put it up one more. And uh, we did, of course, take more casualties than them, uh, which is is not surprising considering the fact that, uh, you know, it was in the mountains. So we'll just take a look and see what happened here in the events. And it looks like our knight was wounded by their knight, who's also the son of a duke. All right, so I think that's the duke up here. Uh, huh. Why are we retreating? Oh, okay, they're retreating. That looked odd. All right, I see. So what we're gonna go ahead and do here is let's take this province here since it's gonna be easier to, to take than that one since this is actually a very large fort. Or one of these is anyway. This one, a very large fortification here. Uh, and part of that's because that mo that bonus we got from that event uh, as our as our father, uh, we did finish up the construction of the simple stone quarries, uh, which is fantastic. That'd be a little extra money, kind of help us out here. Uh, let's go and get something else building. And I think that this one here, since the first two are for money, this one should be for levies. So I'm thinking the barracks, uh, perhaps, uh, as far as like the bonuses we get, we get the spearmen and the heavy infantry bonuses here. I think that's probably would go. the The other option would be the military camps, uh, which of course give the bonuses for uh, you know the toughness and damage, mostly archers and skirmishers here. I think we'll do the barracks, guys. Although we are lacking the money, so we're not going to build anything. We'll, we'll build the barracks when we have the money. All right, so getting this siege will get us a little bit of money here. You see, they're attempting a siege there, but they can't. They they just don't have enough troops with that 154. It's not nearly enough. Now our siege here is going to take three months. We could also assault it to do it faster, but it's unnecessary. Don't need to do that. Still increasing the development over here. Uh, it's currently 11, trying to get up to 12. Now we're at 95% here, 96 now. Uh, so this this will be the end. We might not even be able to finish it before we get this ticked up enough, though we will, of course, to get the money. And we could end up seizing possession of our younger brother as well, in which case, you know, who knows what could happen to a baby in a uh, in a dungeon? Uh, speaking of of babies, we just had a baby, our son. Excellent. Uh, so uh, we need to come up with a name for him. We could name him after ourselves, uh, Michael. Which why not? Yeah, he's our firstborn son. We'll name him after ourselves. Uh, we don't know if he'll actually come uh, to our title or not. Uh, this does cause some confusion though, because he'll be Count Michael the Second unless we become a duke by that point, in which case he'd be Michael the First because he'd be the duke, and that does cause a lot of confusion in the comments when we're talking about characters because we have like two Michael the First. But if that ends up happening, we'll call this one Count Michael and then him whatever his title is, as we did with the previous series when we had three different Adams. Two of them were were Adam the First, one being an emperor and one being a king. All right, so we've got a couple more days here, and we got this completed. We're already at 99% there as well. Now, accusations of witchcraft, bloodstained cloth, crow's feathers, strange-smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented to me by a group of villagers from Archaea as proof that uh, 
Edokia, Edokia, something like that, uh, has been practicing witchcraft in her hut on the outskirts of the village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their bad weather and are calling for her execution. Okay, so we say this evidence is circumstantial, release her, in which case we'll get a ton of lifestyle experience points. Uh, this would also upset them. Negative 25 popular opinion likely would re result in some type of a peasant re rebellion eventually. We have the she must burn for her crimes against God, in which case we will kill her, we'll get piety, and get popular opinion from them. Or we say a witch you say, I could use a new advisor. Uh, so that would then bring her into our court. She has a fantastic learning. Yeah, not bad at all. So let's see what our character would do. So again, we're arrogant and content, and, and neither one of those really seemed to, yeah, neither one of those really would indicate uh, that we'd go with any of these, honestly. And then with fickle would just, you know, means that we could change our mind. Uh, so I, I've kind of feel like we can go with it with any of these, frankly. So what we're gonna do is we're going to say the evidence is circumstantial and release her, and uh, we'll get the stewardship points. No, actually, I've changed my mind. We're gonna go for this one. <laughs> so she's now dead, and we got some piety. Uh, we did get the siege done, excellent. And so that means that we are done on the war. Uh, we could continue conquering if we wanted to, uh, attempting to like seize control uh, of the the brothers here. And there is some good reasons to do that because we've already seized control of one of them, so we could go after the other one as well. But again, it does take so long to do that siege. I suppose there's not really any reason not to do it though, just with the the chance that we might be able to get control of our other brother, and then we have them both sit in our prison, and at that point we can do whatever we want. So yeah, maybe we'll do that. We'll get him into the dungeons. Remember, we are the heir for both of our brothers. So I mean, if you got your brother sitting in the dungeon and, you know, <laughs> you could claim that both of these are rightfully yours because of your own sense of worth, I mean, something to consider. Now, remember, this is going to take forever. It's 10 months to get that done. It's not a short uh, not a short uh, siege here. We do have to watch out for those guys there. Uh, this is a, I'm not sure, but I think it's a hill province. Yeah, it is a hill province. So if they were to attack us, they would have the advantage bonus, plus we don't really have a great general here. So that's something to consider, uh, that if they attacked us, could end up losing the war. Probably not though. I think the second war score, even if we lost a battle, would offset it and we'd be fine. Uh, so, I got an alliance offer from our brother, which we will be declining for right now, till we see what happens. Uh, we can go and take a look at our prisoners and see if there's anything we want to, to do here. Uh, so we have her, and this is not our mother. So I'm guessing, okay, so this is the, the one who married our uncle and then married our father. So she was our, our stepmom. Uh, so we have her in our prison and I'm not entirely sure how our character feels about her, but I assume he would just release her. I don't know if she has any money. Nah, she don't, she doesn't have any money. So, uh, would her son and, uh, be willing to ransom her, our brother? It looks like he would be willing to. So let's hold on to her for a little while. Although there is one more prisoner here. I think we kept this guy because of his, uh, yeah, his martial ability and because he's got an eye patch. He looks super cool and I'm worried about how people will feel with him leading them. Uh, so what happened here? Oh, so he gave up. Okay, uh, so that's kind of unfortunate because I was hoping to finish this. But yeah, he did give in. Uh, so we are no longer his vassal and thus we are now a vassal of the Emperor. Uh, so yeah, he did give in. Uh, so we weren't able to seize control of our brother there. But we did get control of this brother who's now sitting in the prison. So I have to take a look and see what we want to do with him. All right, so remember, we're still trying to sway the bishop here uh, because he does not like us. And that would really help us out towards getting more money and more levies, uh, which as you can see, our, our total soldier count is quite low. We don't even have a thousand men. So to make my bishop more susceptible to my attempts at approaching him, I can include a compliment in my next missive to his court. I'll be sure to mention his either his soaring ambition or I'll keep it short and professional. That's the only thing we can mention. Is he ambitious? He doesn't seem very ambitious at all, in fact. He seems, he's very lazy. 
And I don't think he's a very ambitious guy. Let's just keep it short and professional, I suppose. Because remember, it can be a negative thing. Uh, and... Looks like... Gain 30 opinion from this house, because, okay, something about ward there. Not very important. Uh, let's go and disband our armies. Let's get rid of those, get the money back, uh, going back up. And then we need to go ahead and take care of our uh, our prisoners. So, of course, we're going to let this guy go for a little bit of money. Some mare, so he can pay the 50 gold. We're going to let her go for whatever he has. He has 18 gold, so we're going to do that. Get those agreements in. All right, excellent. All right, so that worked out well. And then just looking at our, our brother, are we still set to inherit? We are. And we just got this baby sitting in the dungeon and, you know, bad things happen to babies in dungeons. I imagine. I mean, I know it's it technically is in house arrest, uh, which is not a dungeon. It's actually house arrest would not be, uh, it should be better than most, uh, unless like peasants live at this time. So if we did this, we'd get 30 dread, we'd spend 100 piety, we gain the trait Kinslayer, because we just killed our, our little brother. And, of course, that's going to have those effects. We lose one level of devotion, which means we will become a sinner. Could, of course, wait until we get the Faithful before we did this. I, I suppose that's always an option. Wait until we get the Faithful, and then it'll flip over. Because I, I don't know if you keep your progress. I want to say you do keep the progress, but just in case you don't, we could wait. Although, it would likely take a long time. We're looking at uh, getting one per month, and we still need a hundred and... 56 more piety uh, to get that you know barring any events that happen that increase uh, you know that change piety so that's a long time that's a long time to wait so I don't think we would yeah I feel like this is I think anybody would do this when provided this opportunity except for a good person of course good person wouldn't kill wouldn't kill their brother but I feel like you're in an opportunity here you inherit that lands yeah I feel like I feel like this is exactly what our character would do here even as a content person. So, uh, I don't know that we'd behead him, though. That seems terrible. Like, why would you behead a, a two-year-old? Uh, I would think that, like, typically when it comes to children being killed in these situations, they're either starved to death or or uh, strangled or smothered or something like that. Uh, so beheading? That seems terrible. But that's what we're going to do. We're going to behead the little baby. And we just gained the Kinslayer trait. So that's awful. Uh, did we not get control of the county? Oh, it looks like our son got it. Uh, so our son, who is stupid, <laughs> wow, our stupid son, he inherited the title. That's interesting. So would that happen here as well? Would Nope, we inherit that one. That's surprising that that was changed like that. Uh, but yeah, apparently our son has inherited the title. And he has also inherited the stupid trait, which is very odd, considering the fact that we don't have any intelligence traits and our, our wife has the quick trait, and yet our son is stupid. All right, so I already can imagine that this is, you know, we could have a, a lot of fun role playing this character if we end up uh, becoming him, playing as a dumb character. Of course, we lost that devotion, uh, as you'd expect, considering the fact that uh, uh, we killed him. But we did keep the progress towards the next one, which I don't think it costs quite as much progress. Oh, it looks like it actually costs more. It's a thousand. Okay, I was thinking it was it would be a little bit less, but. All right, this is what it is. So it's going to be a while before we're no longer a sinner, which, remember, the sinner does get the, the penalties to the opinion, uh, which um, is unfortunate because we're trying to increase the opinion right now of him, and he's now at negative 33. And what is this about? It looks like we're attacking back into Croatia. Byzantine Empire continues to attempt to expand north into Croatian territory. So that's the direction he has chosen to go, it seems. Because he's been focusing quite a bit on expanding that way. Uh, do we have enough money? We do. Uh, let's go ahead and build here now. We could also just improve this one. And this would also reduce the con the construction time of any other buildings we did. So maybe we should do that first before we go ahead and get any other buildings. I think that would be good. Yeah, definitely beneficial. All right, so these, of course, are our, our lieges wars that we are involved in. Looks like he lost that. So did she become independent? I'm not sure what she was, what the war was over. And it doesn't say here. All right, so that's a shame. I'm curious. Okay, so it was over replacing the liege. So it looks like they replaced the father with the son. That's what seems like happened here. All right, uh, so we also got a new law 
And then we have autonomous vassals. All right, excellent. So we have more freedoms. And we were actually able to sway him. Fantastic. Although, because the, you know, us becoming a sinner, we still have him in the negative. So we're not getting anything from him. Uh, so we need to get that up a bit higher. Okay, so this is probably what that event about was the, was the claim that we're still getting here. And I, f I said we'd finish that. So we'll let it keep going for now. Uh, nobody really likes us, as you can see. If anybody wanted to operate against us, they could easily do so. We are being raided. Where? Oh, okay, over here. But that's not our territory, so. Not sure why we got the notification for that. Seems kind of odd. I just, I guess it's just because it's our, our liege. Yeah, you really should only be getting notified of a territory that's yours. Yeah, no, this is, is our territory. It's kind of strange that they notify of it, us of it. Uh, do we have anything here that we need to be aware of? Um, we can demand the payments uh, from, you know, characters, because remember, we do have that, that perk. Of course, this is just demanding a payment from our son, which we actually might want to do once he has enough money. But maybe we just want to let him build up his territory. That does mean that we're going to eventually get control of this when we become our son, so that's good. Uh, it's just kind of a bummer that we don't have it in our hands now, which gives us even more reason, especially considering the fact that he hates us, to try and execute this guy. Uh, our brother. So we're going to go ahead and try and execute him, see if this ends up working or not. It's a very, very low chance of success. Um, but maybe, uh, we don't really have much money for it, but maybe there's going to be some people uh, that want to work against him, that don't like him, uh, and want to, to you know, join us as an agent. We have a very, very good choice here, uh, who's going to increase it quite a bit, Especially the success chance, because this is his guardian. His own guardian wants to kill him. That's terrible. All right. Somebody chose a, a really piss-poor guardian. So I'll go ahead and ask her, and that's going to increase it by a lot. Uh, but she's only the guardian for the next two years. So as long as this takes eight years, we, we won't be doing it. So we got to take that down some. So what we might want to go ahead and do is change up our spy master to doing the support schemes. And hope that that changes things. Looks like it changes a little bit. We're down to three years, but that's still not quick enough. Because remember, the Guardian won't matter. Uh, so we got to get that up more. Uh, the Carps. If it is a pawn for Carps you're interested in, I can build you a terrific one, my lord. The builder before me has good credentials, and my, court and my courtiers seem very excited uh, about the prospect. So we can say you will have all the resources you need. We'll gain 20 opinion, and we'll lose 50 gold that we don't have. Is it truly the best deal you can give me? And then we'll be able to uh, have a 75% chance of giving less money. Though if we fail, which is 25% chance, then we'll lose prestige. Do we get the opinion boost either way? We do, because everybody's all impressed with our magnificent fish pond. Or you say, well, stop wasting my time. Well, I'd say this one here, since we're a steward and... You know, we're, we're arrogant, so we're always trying to, to get the best deal. Although, I almost feel like doing this because it's like... Yeah, I think we might do that one, actually. I, I feel like that's something like an arrogant guy might might be yelling out at people. You know, anybody who's lesser than him, that they're wasting his time talking to him. So, we'll do that one. I don't know if it was the most fitting, but... And what is this about? Okay, we improved opinion with our younger brother, Manuel. Right, the guy we're, we're attempting to, to kill. Uh, as of right now, we're just not able to do it fast enough, guys. He would, uh, I think he would end up coming of age before we finished. In which case, then his guardian would not be worth anywhere near as many points. So we need to find a way to speed it up. I'm not sure exactly how we'd, we'd do that. Uh, so we did get a perk here. So we have a couple different choices because we could either continue to go down this route, which we already started, but this is really one of the best perks down this route. Now, there are some great stuff here, of course, uh, and this is all about earning money. Uh, or we go down the architect path, which is, uh, now I really like all of the paths here, honestly. Or we could go down the administrator. Uh, so I think we should, should base it off of our traits, uh, though it doesn't look like there's actually anything here that would imply we'd go one route over the other. Yeah, I mean, we could really pick any of these, I suppose. So since we can pick any of them, uh, I feel like we won't do administrator. That one's... That one's better for somebody who's got like a lot of vassals, and, and it's just not uh, all that useful for us, honestly. So it makes the most sense to go down one of these two here, then increase our money. 
uh, give us you know economic benefits since that's largely what we need right now. Uh, now, of course, some of these aren't uh, as useful as others. Yeah, they, you know, obviously, uh, some of these don't aren't going to help us that much. We might kind of bounce it a little bit and kind of bounce around based on what is better at that moment. Like like here, extorting subjects, you know, obviously that that will help us. You can get a lot of money from that, and and we're not too worried about tyranny either, uh, since we don't really have vassals for the most part. So yeah, we, we might just go for that one. But yeah, I think we might kind of bounce back and forth between these two based on whatever is the most beneficial thing to us at the moment. So let's go for this one here. Can you get a good, nice chunk of money from that one? I also want to get this one to reduce the construction of buildings. That'd be pretty helpful. So yeah, we might just bounce around on there, I think, do things. I don't think we ever did that in, in our previous series. You know, go down two different perk trees at the same time. Uh, what is this about? We can declare war on him. Do we have a claim here? Looks like we do have a claim there. I'm not entirely sure how we got that claim. I don't remember getting a claim. Maybe that was one of the events that I clicked through all super quick. So apparently we could declare war on him and uh, take that territory. Uh, but obviously he's much more powerful than us. And as a content character, I don't think we're going to do that. Uh, I think we might do some expansion, but it's going to be a lot more limited than what it normally would be, guys. Because of the content. I think that's the way we'll play it. You know, just a little bit of expansion, but not as much as, as we normally would. Uh, and, and we'll justify the little bit of expansion we do with the arrogance and the fickle, you know, that we think, you know, we, we think very highly of ourselves, which is which is kind of odd. The arrogant and, and content together. In a way, it, they're definitely, again, this is another situation where they're not mutually exclusive. You can certainly be both. You'd be content in your life while also thinking that you're the greatest thing since sliced bread. Uh, but at the same time, typically somebody who's arrogant and has a high worth for themselves uh, often finds themselves not very content because they feel like they're not getting what they think they they deserve uh, so with the the steward uh, we don't have any good options no there's nobody we got a powerful vassal here which obviously wants that that position and i'm at the uh, the mind of like what's it matter what's it matter if it's seven or nine it's just it's not even that big of a difference besides i guess the two nines are already in our council anyways so it's the difference between seven or eight and whether you please a, a powerful vassal or not. So we're going to appoint him, though. It looks like he would actually make a decent spy master. Let me just take a look and see if any of these guys have other traits that they'd be good at. Because he's not a powerful vassal. He's only 18. Uh, so we could move him. But he's the only one that I could really see, see justify, you know, getting rid of him. But then with a the steward, then you have to appoint one of these two here. Yeah, I, I, we'll just go with the mayor here, guys. It's fine. He's garbage. It kind of sucks because we're trying to get that development increase, but I think we did get it up to 12. Yeah, we did. Uh, so it's just really slow going up to 13. And, and maybe we won't even let it go to 13 because it's just going to take so long. While we have this really cruddy guy, we could instead just have him move over to collect taxes and give us a little, a little slight bonus there, though this does reduce building construction time, so that's something to consider. Uh, breathing down next. Uh, there's a faction created against our our liege. We'll have to take a look at the factions of our liege and see if there's any that we're interested in joining. Since we are, of course, now a vassal of the emperor, a direct vassal of him. So breaking, uh, breathing down next. It seems that Count Manuel is tightening security at the at court, hoping to track down traitor schemers. My fellow plotter, which I don't know what her name is, is concerned that she might have attracted some unwanted suspicion. Ooh, that's not good. So we say, I trust her abilities. This is an intrigue challenge, which she's not great at intrigue. 46% uh, chance she remains undetected increases her intrigue, or 53% chance th that the whole scheme is exposed. Or we should say her trail to me ends now, and she'll no longer be part of the scheme. Well, we can't even do the scheme without her, so it seems like this is a very easy uh, choice here, guys. Now, there's nobody else who can join, so or will join. So we just have to risk it. Probably fell. Oh, she actually succeeded and increased her intrigue. All right, awesome. So, how are we looking on getting that done? Uh, two years and 84% chance, 95% chance of secrecy. Very unlikely that it'll get caught. So, we can now spend the money to get the the claim here, and I guess we will. Though I don't know that we'll take advantage of it anytime soon here, guys. Uh, so, this is going to get us increased holding taxes. Very, very nice. And then finish up that task so we could send them to do something else. But again, I don't think we're going to do claims, guys. I don't think that's the best way to do this. I think instead we're just going to do this one here. 
and that'll give us that little opinion boost. Although I don't think it applies to him. And we're, we're trying to get him up to, to at least above zero, but yeah, you're sitting at negative 11 right now. If we can sway him one more time, what was the chances of that? 52%, not great chances. Uh, that'll get him into the positive and get us some money and some, some taxes, or excuse me, some taxes and some levies. Uh, a neighboring ruler won his war, so this is our previous lord, right? Or maybe not. Okay, I thought he was. It looks like him. But yeah, apparently that's not him. Our previous lord is this guy. Okay. All right, so he won his war, uh, and that was over this here. Okay. I see. All right, so it looks like our, our previous lord, that's our previous lord there, he got a claim on us. All right, so we'll see if he attacks us or not. If he was to do it, oh, he's in prison right now. Uh, but if he was to do it, does he have the troop numbers? Yeah, I think we could declare war on him and, and probably win, even with his ally. I think we might still be able to win, perhaps. I guess it depends on if they hire mercenaries or not. He doesn't have any money anyways. So yeah, we could declare war on him, uh, though we cannot declare war on our debt, or when we're in a truce, of course. Uh, so yeah, we could declare war on him later and get the claim. And maybe we will in the future. Again, it does seem that people don't want me to like not declare war at all. It just seems like we're not going to declare war very much. So maybe like 10, 15 years from now, maybe our character gets a little bit bored and decides to, uh, to try and get uh, another county under his control. That's a possibility. Uh, it looks like our son would inherit this. So if we kill him, our son's the one that's going to benefit, not us. Okay. Uh, we also had another counselor die, died from his wounds. Uh, so we'll have to get a new marshal here, which there's not really any good choices. He's a 14, but I think we already have, oh, that's him. Okay, huh. So really just no good options here. So what I think we're gonna do, because for me, the marshal's a little bit more important in our situation than the uh, chancellor is, we're gonna reassign him. So we'll have the best possible marshal we can get, and then we'll just give uh, this knight, we'll give him this job here. He can be our chancellor. Uh, but yeah, that's one of the issues with being a smaller, uh, you know, smaller realm. Just being a little count. We just don't have as many characters available, as many vassals and stuff uh, to give titles to. Uh, now, uh, in CK2, you could always ask other, other characters to come to your court and then give them jobs. Uh, in, this, in this game, CK3, it's... You know, it's, they don't really accept very often. It's very, very difficult to get them to accept. And unfortunately, our scheme was discovered. Damn it. All right, so that's uh, not surprising, I guess. Well, it kind of is surprising because of the fact that we had a 95% chance. It just kind of sucks we threw away all that money. Yeah, I don't think this will ever succeed. We'll probably just have to, have to abandon it. Uh, we could always keep it going, though. And then, uh, you know, just see what happens. Our character's so arrogant, he might just... Keep it going even with the low chance. He'd have all his advisors, spy master telling him there's no chance that this can succeed. Our agent was just dis discovered. The scheme has been discovered. Everything's been discovered. And then we'd still keep it going because <laughs> we believe we can do it with our 5% success chance. <laughs> so we could always keep it going. Uh, again, it's not going to, it's not going to happen, guys. So we finished up the shallow ore mines. All right, excellent. So that's a bit more money. And also we can construct these buildings faster. We are still in debt, so we won't be building anything else right now, guys. And we were able to sway the bishop. Fantastic, so that'll be more money for us and more levies as well. So we're now up to about a thousand. Written in the stars, a count to scare a local mystic with dubious morals and a fabricated omen. Perfect. Before the mystic leaves for Count Manuel's court, there is but one question. Will my false omen be one of fortune or of doom? All right, so we can say a bad omen for a bad count. I believe Manuel is easier to affect with bad news. And and then we could do the instead do the good omen to lull him with a false security. So what these do, they affect different things. Uh, so this one, he had, had, had a bad omen, so he has a health penalty, a moderate health penalty. The scheme is going to grow and gain some progress as well. And this is if this works. If not, then the scheme will lose progress. If we do this one here, uh, same things happen. The only difference is we get the good omen, which is going to give him a health boost. 
Okay. So let's do let's do this one. A bad omen for a bad count. And it worked. So we got a little bit of a, a health penalty. Uh, probably not enough to, to cause him any issues. Yeah, he's still fine. He's a 15-year-old strapping young lad. He's already uh, betrothed as well uh, to this woman here. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold up. Is that not his mom? Oh, that's his stepmom. <laughs> so Manuel married his stepmom. Wow. Yeah, he's marrying his stepmom. That is... So that just proves he's a bad count. I feel like everything we're doing against him is justified now. I'm here marrying a stepmom, and, and I guess we should hold her accountable for that as well. You know what the good thing here is, is guys? That he's never gonna have a kid with her. And they're not gonna have a kid. Uh, she's 43, I highly doubt he'll get her pregnant. I mean, I could be wrong here. She is lustful, so maybe, yeah. I guess they could still have a kid. But it's less likely. She's also depressed as well, which increases her fertility. So she might not live very long. But yeah, that's that's interesting. He married his stepmom, uh, a brewing troublemaker. Uh, so this is about our son. Well, I've come to expect mischief from my son and heir, Count Michael. His creativity keeps me on my toes. When it is not a prank, it is a brawl. A disgruntled tutor or grazed knees from an adventure gone wrong. Never a dull moment with this boy. All right. So remember, he is ruling on his own over here. That means we won't be able to raise him and help pick his traits or his education. It's just going to be whatever he picks, which he's stupid, so we can't expect him to make good decisions. So he's rowdy, though. So maybe he'll go with the uh, military route, maybe. Uh, we'll have to see what he does. Uh, en route. When the time comes, my agents will need a safe escape route out of Count Manuel's court, should anything go wrong. A detailed map of the local hills with all its hidden paths and caves would be an invaluable resource. So we can pay this hunter to draw a map, in which case we would have higher success chance and higher secrecy. Uh, there's also the possible outcomes that uh, nothing happens, that he brags about his wealth, 51% chance that happens, and that it will decrease the secrecy. It's already known anyway, so it's irrelevant. They say explore the hills yourself. Uh, and we might be able to map it. We might also just get lost. Or you can abandon the idea. What, what would we do here? We're pretty damn arrogant. I think we try and map it ourselves. <laughs> I don't need to pay you anything. Besides, I'm broke. I can map it myself. <laughs> Let's do that. 60% chances of success. Probably going to fail it. Oh, it worked. Maybe we have a reason to be so arrogant. Maybe we are awesome. I don't know. So we were able to map it. Again, not that any of this is going to have much effect. Uh, secrecy is now 30% instead of 25%. Uh, but success chance is still 5%. So again, not very likely to succeed. Lots of people, but nobody willing to join. This also might be because we don't have the money. I don't know if that's affecting it at all. And it seems like everybody is terrified of Camp, Count Manuel as well. I wonder why he's so terrifying. Why well, he's callous and arbitrary. He's gregarious too though. Uh, but yeah, this does result in more tyranny. He has a little bit of tyranny as well. All right. He's actually a pretty cool character. I wish we'd played as him instead. With the callous, the arbitrary, and the gregarious, that's kind of fun. Yeah, this I think this would be a real fun character to play as, and plus he got a good education as well. I guess so did we. I guess both of our, our characters here had, uh, uh, you know, both of our previous sons here, ourselves and our, and our brother, both got very good educations. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, plush and exotic carpet. So plush and vibrant and soft as the first light of dawn. A merchant presents me with an exquisite carpet in the hopes of good future relations. As I marvel at the fine weave, I am struck by a thought. Wouldn't a carpet like this muffle the treading of feet, even conceal the steps of a bumbling agent? So we can give him the carpet. Uh, Count Manuel will be honored by such a gift. If he accepts it, it'll gain progress. Uh, it looks like he'll also gain prestige. And hostile scheme resistance will be negative 10. If he suspects it's off, then the scheme resistance will be up. Or we can keep it for ourselves, in which case, you know, we get those same benefits. Well, I feel like we're, we're trying to kill him. Uh, so yeah, I think, and we're content, so we don't need the carpet. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go ahead and uh, give him the gift, and this could very well end up being a negative. And he accepts the gift. Of course he did. Of course he did. Still, not very likely to get this done. And we have no money to buy agents, even if there were any will that were willing to operate against him. 
The voice of reason. Another council meeting, another conflict. Our marshal and steward are arguing violently about the training regiment of the troops. As count, I could silence them with a single word, but I have a better idea. My diplomatic pursuits have given me insight on how to handle situations like these to please everyone. So we can side with him, increasing his opinion, side with him, and increase him his, his opinion, or you can find a compromise, compromise that makes everybody happy, which would not work because we suck at diplomacy. Which would we do? I mean, we're arrogant, so maybe we just think that we're awesome again, and let's do that. And this will probably piss off all of them. That's exactly what's probably going to happen. Well, maybe not. It's a 50% chance that we find a good compromise. It's a 10% chance we find a great one. So it's really not that bad. Let's do it. And we arranged in a good one, so we pleased them both. And it's not so much because we cared about pleasing them both, but because we believed we could. And it worked. Again, I'm kind of starting to suspect there's something to this arrogance with him. Maybe it's not arrogance, it's just confidence. <laughs> so we lost another counselor. Good God, we've been losing counselors left and right. Uh, we just lost three of them. Uh, so that was the marshal we had just gotten. So now we have to appoint somebody else here. Uh, we do have a, a new mayor. I think this guy wasn't here before, and he's okay. I, I guess that's who we'll have to assign, because I don't think we have any other options. Yeah, that's it. I don't know why I'm looking through all those. It shows them, like, literally right there. Since we have so few, they're all in that that screen, and yet I still go looking through them all with the hope that I'm going to find somebody better. Got another stewardship perk. Excellent. Let's go ahead and get something selected here. So... We can go with this one, but we don't have a stress level. So again, we're just gonna flip between these two, as I said before, based on whichever ones would be best for us. And so we're gonna go with this one here to get the building construction costs reduced. So that once we do have enough money to get a building, it'll be cheaper, just a little bit cheaper anyways, uh, which the next building we're gonna get would be 142. A gullible wife. I can barely contain my glee as I find Countess Acilia which is, this is Count Manuel's wife, which, remember, is his previous stepmother. Uh, so I found her waiting for me along with a small, I have no idea what that is, epi, epi, epi page? Epi page? I don't know what that is. If I could get her to help me in my scheme. You sent word that you wanted to see me, my lord? Is she now trying to seduce us? Is she going for both of her stepsons? Because I guess that'd be fitting for a lustful character here. <laughs> She's deceitful and paranoid. Is she gullible? That doesn't sound like a gullible person at all. I don't think that sounds very accurate at all. I think she's trying to trick us. I see trickery involved here. Uh, so we can say, your husband has been calling you a cold-hearted doxy and lied to her. It's a diplomacy challenge, but it looks like we might be able to succeed because she sucks at diplomacy too. So 75% chance we succeed, and that would reduce her opinion of her husband and stepson, which I'm gonna say as many times as possible. Everybody knows how messed up this is. Or we can say, please tell me about your castle, and then the merger scheme will progress. That's not really all that beneficial, guys. The murder scheme's already progressing, and it's already going to be happening in five months. That doesn't help us at all. Now, if we gave us some other kind of advantage, uh, but with this one, we'll just make her dislike him. We're going to talk some smack. Uh, would we talk smack? Is there anything that would indicate that we wouldn't talk smack? Probably not. Yeah, I don't think so. So let's go ahead and say that. And she believed us. It worked. So now they have a lower opinion that will affect their uh you know their fertility so that's helpful and she already has lower fertility as it is with the recent upset among the peasants of neopatris one of my agents has presented a unique suggestion for taking care of count manuel with coin in the right pockets and agitators in every corner we could stage an entire riot while the count is passing through the streets so obviously very very low chance of success we're just gonna say this is far too predictable and push it off with the hope that we have more positive events more events that will happen and increase the chance of succeeding there. Also, I think they only remain undiscovered for a certain amount of time. So you can kind of postpone it for a little while. Uh, Zoe is able to get married. This is, of course, our sister who's still in our court here. I, I want to say we never did arrange anything for her, so we'll be able to get an alliance now. Uh, now, I don't know who was educating her, but that was what that little notification was about earlier. Uh, I was wondering who that was about. I forgot about our sister Zoe here. Uh, who hates us, by the way, because we killed her brother. Uh, so she is brave, fickle, like ourselves, and ambitious. Uh, she's a fortune builder, and she's quick. That's also causing some opinion penalties here, is the fact that she's ambitious while we're content. So we're going to need to arrange a marriage for her, hopefully 
for an alliance. So let's just see what possible alliances we could get here. Uh, and if we can't do a possible alliance, maybe we'll do a matrilineal just to try and spread the dynasty, uh, perhaps. I don't know if there'll be any good ones. I think what we really need is an alliance, though. Uh, so we're going to ally with the Czechs. Uh, that's pretty far away, though, so I don't think that'd be all that helpful. Looking for a Greek. Um, we could do this guy. I don't know where he's at. I guess we can take a look. It's the sun. Uh, so this would be up here. And that guy has a good chunk of territory. He's got two counties up there. I mean, it's not a good chunk of territory, but it's more than we have. So yeah, we could do an alliance with them. That's better than anything we've had before, and he's somewhat close. He could help us out. Uh, I think he's actually at war right now, though, isn't he? Yeah, it looks like he is. No, he's not at war. Okay, he's an adulterer. He's reclusive. So that is not a bad alliance, I feel. We'll want to look to see if there's any other ones here. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't seem like it. Uh, it does seem that this is a, a duke here. And this, this would be a very good alliance with his son. Yeah. Now, given he won't do any matrilineal marriages, of course. But that's not, that is not a bad alliance, guys. We'll see if there's any other ones here. But I'm thinking that's the best one. This is, I mean, he's not very powerful uh, right now. But yeah, I think he's probably the best one. He is currently losing a war as well. Okay, but that's involving several people. I don't even think it's his war, actually. I think he probably supporting one of his allies here. He does have a lot of allies. Surprised he actually wants another ally. I think that's probably the best one, guys. I don't think we're going to find anything better than that. Uh, there's more counts. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think we're going to find a duke. Um, now, I think the reason why the duke is listed as not as, as high as the count here is because that count has two counties, while this duke does not. He only has the one county. Uh, but again, he is a duke. So I think that that's the best marriage, guys. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's arrange the marriage for a son. I think that's a fantastic marriage. It's, it's an ally that's nearby. And uh, I think it's a good fit. Now, he's not going to accept the matrilineal marriage. We can try, though. And Zoe will actually get prestige, of course, because he's a duke. So yeah, this will give us our first, uh, our first alliance. And uh, moving on up in the world, guys. There we go. Beautiful. So we now have an ally for once. That'll be helpful. Of course, he might end up calling us into wars. Uh, I guess that'll give us something to do if we're helping him fight his wars. Uh, of course, we won't get much from that. You know, we'll get the, uh, the prestige, the fame, that kind of good stuff, the money that we earn from it. Uh, virtuous bishop has been celebrated, so orthodoxy's fervor has increased. You almost never see virtuous bishops in Catholicism. <laughs> like it's so, you so rarely see that notification uh, when you're a Catholic. It's always the other one, the negative one. Uh, and ne negotiate an alliance with our son? Yeah, of course. We'll ally him as well. We want to protect his interest, and he should want to help protect our interests since we share interest here. So that makes sense that we'd ally. And I think there was a notification about that. I probably should have done it myself. It required our, our young boy, four-year-old boy, to contact me. I like his outfit. He's got a nice outfit here. He hasn't got any traits just yet. He's only four, though, so he hasn't even started his education yet. So that makes sense. Uh, and which is... Which war is this? Oh, he's seems to be continuing to increase his lands. Yeah, look at that. All right. So, yeah, I think he I think he did anyway. Took a, a province from him, I believe. All right, so a meal to die for. So another chance to kill him. It's a 5% chance, guys, so we're going to just have to keep on. We're not going to read it because we're not going to do it. Uh, it's only a 5% chance. We'll keep on postponing it with the hope that something else will come up, another event. Probably not, though. Might eventually just have to cancel it, guys. Or just try and try and do it with a 5% chance. I suppose that's uh, an option as well. So this is going to be the last event we do here in the episode. Then we're going to end it. Uh, stocking the stores. With a mighty burp, I push the rest of my plate away from me and sprawl back in my chair. Lately, my kitchens have begun to swell with golden grain and freshly hunted game, giving all my courtiers the healthy sheen of the overfed. Uh, I grimace. Though this bounty is great, it cannot last forever. I must decide what to do with all this excess food. So we can salt it or smoke it as long as we store it. And then that would give us the heavily stocked storage for 15 years, increasing garrison size. 
And then my guests and I shall down dine richly, yeah, even us 150 prestige. And then we get the their empty stores, or we say even the servants shall she shall eat as their count does, in which that will increase development growth and popular opinion, while, while also giving the nearly empty stores. So which would our character do? Well, like as an arrogant person, we recognize that nobility and and the peasants are are different and and. You look down on them, perhaps. I don't think we'd do that one. So it's really just uh, between these two here and being a content person. I feel like we'd probably just salt it or smoke it and store it. Yeah, I don't think we really need to. We're fine with the, the current mill. Uh, so we'll do this one, and that'll give us that that benefit there. And we don't really need the extra prestige, anyways. Uh, it is always helpful to have more knights, though, since. It's one of the few ways that we can kind of increase our, our combat ability uh, as as a, a weak and uh, a weak and small realm here. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and end the episode here. The Byzantine Empire continues to expand. You see, we've taken some lands here, taken some lands here. So uh, our emperor is at least not losing lands uh, to our future title. So <laughs> he's expanding it, which is a good thing. That's what we want to see. Uh, so I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. A lot of stuff happened today. Quite a few things happened. Of course, we had our son, and now he has his own title here. Uh, so he's ruling on his own, and we won't have any control over what happens with him. And I'm expecting to see some craziness happen, because of the fact that he's stupid. So, yeah. I, I hope that it doesn't spread to his kids. It probably will, though. Uh, he is not blessed with intellect. So, yeah, it'll probably end up spreading to his kids, and we'll just have a line of really dumb characters. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure you leave a like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. I do hope to see you guys on the next episode, which remember, will not be until late on Saturday or early on Sunday, guys. Essentially, as soon as I'm uh, able to. As soon as it's edited, rendered, you know, obviously recorded, edited, rendered, upload, and YouTube process it. Uh, after all those are done, those steps are done, I'll make it public. Uh, so sorry, it is going to be a little bit late, guys, but it's it's kind of a crazy week. And this is going to be a crazy uh, next couple of weeks, honestly. Uh, it's going to be, uh, it's just the end of the nature of it because, you know, we have like a two-week period here where it's, uh, where we got like lots of, of holidays and stuff happening. You know, it's two weeks where it starts with, with my birthday and then we have Thanksgiving. And then this year we're going to have our, our family holiday, the little family holiday we do every year. It's going to be in early December. Typically, we have it in early or mid-November, but we moved it this year uh, because of a couple of different reasons. And so we're going to have that. And then right after that, we have my daughter's birthday. So like we have all those holidays in a period of, of just a couple of weeks. Uh, and then, you know, just everything else that's that's going on right now. Uh, so we got these two series going with the CK3 and, and the Hoi 4. So it's, it's going to be kind of hectic. So hopefully we don't have too many, you know, delays like that. But I expect, you know, here in November and here in December, as usual, you know, it's going to be, uh, there'll be some, some delays and some days we don't have videos and stuff. It's just going to happen, guys. Uh, so just uh, expect that uh, to, to kind of be the norm over the next, uh, I don't know, six weeks or so. Uh, but I'll try and keep it to a minimum, make sure we have, try and have a video every day if we can. Uh, so yeah, I will see you guys on the next, that next episode. Uh, again, that'll be late Saturday at the earliest. Uh, so I'll see you then, and thanks for watching.